All right, welcome back everybody. This is Sean Ray with Sean Realty, and it's time for part two of what to do. Part two, what to do, hey. Um, if you guys haven't seen part one, it's kind of lengthy, but it goes over where we're at in the market right now, so I recommend pausing this and going to see part one so you know what we're talking about. But basically in part one, we kind of went over where we are in the Dallas market and why it's so hard to find deals right now. And then now I'm gonna talk about, now that it is so hard to find deals, how do you still make money even in the top of the top of the market. If you guys like this kind of content, make sure to like, subscribe, it really helps out the video. I average like 100 something views in video, so if I can get to 200 views a video, that would be a big improvement on my mental abilities, because I'm giving you a lot of content for free. All I ask in return is that you like and subscribe. Thanks, and comment, I'd like to hear from you guys. Okay, part two, I'm going to make sure to take my time with this because this is gonna get very convoluted and very complex and I might even get lost in my own brain talking about it. So, bear with me and then hopefully you guys have your full attention spans. No ADD allowed in this video, talking to myself. Okay, there's very difficult to find a deal right now, but I have a lot of investors that invested with me over the last few years who are like, Sean, I have too much money. I know it sounds ridiculous, but whenever you have been buying in these markets last five years, if you've been in real estate last five years, anybody that's bought real estate in the last five years, actually ever, and then anytime before today, anyone that's ever bought real estate before today has made money. And so it's difficult whenever you're making that much money, you gotta figure out what to do with it. And so some of these people have been taking all their Airbnb profits and putting it into Tesla, and then Tesla has gone up a lot myself included. And so now we have these huge portfolios on, on stocks because we just kept on taking our Airbnb profits and instead of putting in a savings account, which you shouldn't be doing, and losing money, we've been putting it in the stock market. And instead of putting the S&P 500, like everyone tells us to do, like if you're a Graham Stephan or Steven follower, always about the S&P 500 dollar cost averaging, well, you know, that went down. So, mm, should have done Tesla. I'm just kidding, whatever. Whatever you're into, Bitcoin, NFTs, whatever, it doesn't matter. You probably have made money. Um, and so now we have these big stock, stock profiles of two, three, four, five hundred dollars, five hundred thousand dollars plus. So what do we do with that money right now? Uh, equity and homes are massive. We bought homes for some of my investors for $350,000 a couple years ago that are now appraising for five hundred dollars to seven hundred thousand dollars depending on the house. It's crazy. So much money is out there, but what do we do? We need to keep the ball rolling. And once you have money, you gotta keep, it's called currency for a reason. You gotta keep it current like a river. Keep it flowing, make more money, man. So they want me to keep on buying them Airbnb properties, but I tell them, based on the last video, that's not really the smartest thing to do anymore. So, here's the idea. And we haven't started it yet. If you wanna be the first one to start, this is all going right now. We're setting this all up right now. We have all the pieces in motion, and it's just time to start executing. The stupidest thing anybody can do is start flipping properties at the peak of the top of the housing market. And that is what we're gonna do, folks. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but hear me out. There are, there is a need right now in the real estate market for these old 1970 homes. And we have areas like all of, from Lakewood Heights, uh, all the way down, we have Lakewood, uh, Lockwood, the L Streets, all the way down till you get to the, uh, the Fair Park area. All of that area, all the cost of views and the cost of Lindas and all of this, it's all ripe for the taking. They were all built in the 50s, 60s, 70s. And all these homes just require just 30,000, 40,000. If you wanna put an extension, turn a three bedroom to four bedroom, and actually start making money on Airbnb, 50, 60, 70,000, converting a garage into an ADU, building an ADU, maybe $100,000 in renovations, but probably not that much. But all these homes are ripe for the taking. We can buy them for 120 to $150 per square foot. These homes and these markets are going for $250 per square foot when they're post renovated. And so there is a hundred dollars per square foot of just free play that we can play with. And so if you can somehow put in a little bit of renovation 
and then you turn this three bedroom that really couldn't make that much money, maybe three to $4,000 a month on Airbnb, you can turn it into a six to $8,000 a month uh, uh, property on Airbnb. You turn it from a $200,000 purchase and then you put in 30, 50, $60,000 into it and now it's a 260, $270,000 purchase but then the ARV after repair value is 320, 350, even $400,000 and it's new and it's sexy and has a four bedroom and it can now make six to $8,000 a month on Airbnb. Sign me up all day. If you can show me a home that is 300,000 that can make me $6,000 a month on Airbnb, I'm in. 400,000 can make $8,000 a month on Airbnb, I'm in. 200,000, make 400,000, I'm in. There's too much of this, I need my property, make 10 to $15,000 a month thing. Just get over it, it's over, it gets done. Buy as many real estate properties as possible. I don't care what the price and how perfect it is, just get your money in the real estate market because it's going up and I don't see any reason why it's gonna not keep going up. It might be like this and then stagnate and keep going up eventually over time, but I don't see any bubble that's gonna pop and it's gonna come back down. So the sooner you get in, the more money you're gonna make and even if you're gonna to try to hold it for five or 10 years, no matter what market cycle is gonna happen, it's going to be more expensive then than it is now. So just get started. Whatever money you have saved, just get started. 200,000, 300,000, 400,000, whatever. Now, what if you're saying, hey, Sean, I don't have 200 to $300,000 cash to buy a property and flip it and then put it back on the market and then sell it to get that money back, but then how am I gonna make Airbnb? So I'm just gonna basically invest $300,000 in a property just to be making $4,000 to $6,000 a month that sounds crazy, or $6,000 to $8,000 a month. The ROI on that and the cash and cash return on that is so low. Why would anybody do that? I get it, it's a really good question. Follow me, that's the whole point in this video. I'm gonna go through three different steps and how you can make money doing this, um, depending on what your current financial situation is. Okay, let's get started. If you have too much cash, if you're cash heavy right now, you have hundreds of thousands of dollars because you've been killing on an Airbnb or whatever happens you're doing, and you need to do something with your money. This is what I would do. You take your hundreds of thousands of dollars, let's say for instance $300,000, you buy a 200, $220,000, $230,000 house. You make it look super sexy. All these old homes are typically three bedrooms. You're so lucky to find a four bedroom, but probably let's do a three bedroom, let's be realistic. You do a Chip and Joanna off of Fixer Upper, if you ever guys seen that show, and you Chip and Joanna the hell out of it. Like you just magnolia that thing up. And then once you do that, then you make it look really nice. And then you get yourself in a position to where you're making six to $8,000 on it, probably six. And so you add an extension, a four bedroom, somewhere in the house, convert something, do whatever you gotta do. And then after that, you have the home that you bought for 200,000, you're 50, 60, $70,000 in, now the key thing is you have to wait six months from the day of purchase. And if any lenders are watching this, make sure if I say anything unclear in this video, you correct me in the comments. I am not a know-it-all, I'm okay with being wrong. This is still something we're developing every day. This is a conversation with you and me. This is the beginning of a well-rounded conversation with you and me. I take no insults, tell me I'm wrong, that's fine. Let's get money together. So, the day you purchase it, then you need to wait six months. Say for instance you purchase it and it takes two to three months to renovate it. Normally, people are gonna take you, it's gonna say the contractor, two to three months, and then this is the budget. Well, that gets pushed out normally a month or so. And so then your actual is four months. And the budget is 50,000. It's actually probably 60,000. After six months, then you can take the current ARV, the current market value, I apologize. And say for instance, you bought the house for 200, just say 200, you put 70,000, so you're 270 in. In six months from now, after the summer has had its crazy boom, then that home is gonna be worth way more than it is right now, way more than your current ARV. Then you put a loan on top of that. Your equity in the home is gonna be ridiculous. And so whenever that happens, you can have a 25% equity on the home. 
but there's still gonna be probably a spread because of how much the house is value now. Okay, say for instance, you bought the house for $200,000 and then you put $70,000 into it. So you're at 270. Then you have this spread from 270 to 300. So you have a $30,000 spread that you now have from 270 to 300. Remember that, it's important later. Now in six months, you have to wait six months from the time you purchased it, not the time you're done renovating it, the time you purchased it. So really you only have two or three months after your renovation is. Then you put, and during that time, you can also put on Airbnb. You can take those two months to be buying furniture and decorating it and doing all this kind of beautiful stuff to beautify the property, make it look really nice. Then the appraiser guy comes in and he's like, hey, I work for the, the bank, blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna tell you how much your property's worth. Boom, your property's worth $400,000. Whoa, oh my God, I bought this thing for $200,000. That is crazy, I just doubled my money. Yes, kind of. They are gonna give you a loan on it for 25%. You're gonna to have to have 25% equity. So that means $100,000 from the $400,000 market value. So that means $100,000 gone. But you have it in equity, but whatever. But you still have a profit of $30,000 because you put $70,000 into it. So that means that you can Put that loan on the property and you still have that $30,000 that you can play with. You just basically got a loan with an extra kind of cash that you can play with. So that's, got, that's awesome. Now you can do this over and over and over again. If you have access to more money, then you can do this multiple times, but this thing you can consistently roll. There is never an end to this. There's always homes for three bedroom homes. You can always convert to four or four bedrooms. You can convert to be super sexy that you can consistently buy over and over and over and over again. And whatever extra money you can have, then you can consistently flip it into the next property, into the next property, into the next property. Now, why is it not so dumb to be flipping properties at the top of the top of the top of the market? because normally it's really dumb to do that whenever, oh, by the way, the rate is supposed to be less than six months. And so if you start now, then the rate you'd be getting on the home would actually be lower. Supposedly, if you talk to most educated lenders, it's gonna be lower in six months, so awesome. Okay, so back to what I was saying, I digress. So the reason why you normally in a flip don't want to invest at the top of the market is that sometimes when you buy a property, say for instance, the top of the market for $200,000, by the time in three to six months, by the time that you're actually ready to list it and sell it and stuff like that, the market has already shifted. And so you're basically, you bought it here and then you renovated it here and by the time for you to sell it, you're here. And so here is where you actually would sell it for less than what you would have been in on so then you're underwater and that is not a good deal. But in this case, even if the market did do that, which I don't think it would, but even if it did that, you're not selling it. You're actually holding on to it. So even if the market goes like that and it comes back up, you're making money the entire time through Airbnb. That's why it still makes sense to do this even in an up market. You guys follow? All right, back to the discussion. Now you might be saying, person number two, strategy number two, I don't have any money. I'm literally watching this right now. The first person I talked about had too much money. What do I do with all this money? So much money. Just buy homes, renovate them, and in six months, put a loan on them. Boom, you make money. Awesome, now you have a bunch of Airbnbs. But you, John, whatever your name is, you don't have any money. What you could do is the same thing they're doing, but it's called a hard money loan. And so if you know in your brain, if you just trust the process and you take a massive risk, if you watch Ray Dalio's um, awesome YouTube series about principles for success. Know your level of risk. If you're willing to risk the biscuit for all the success, if you like your life and you don't wanna mess it up, then don't risk anything. But if you don't like your life and you really wanna risk it, what you currently have to change your life forever, then risk it. Trust yourself, trust your abilities. If you don't trust yourself, watch more YouTube videos, read more books, do more podcasts. And when you have built up the confidence enough in yourself, when you've read and done enough things to where you believe you can do this without a shadow of a doubt, come to me. First, go to a private money lender. You wanna get yourself hard money lender. And then after you do that, make sure that you have the right, uh, the, the right numbers, make sure all the numbers make sense and the payback quote makes sense and the interest rate makes sense. 
But if you know that if you can do this right, you can pull out that extra money once you put a loan on it in six months. If you get a six month hard money loan, or yourself a year long hard money loan, whatever it happens to be, and you can pay it off as soon as you, um, as soon as you can, as soon as you start making that money and you get that loan on the house, loan on the house, now you have that money back. And so now you can pay off whoever you need to pay off and you've paid yourself off. So if you truly believe in yourself, that is a way for you to do it. Getting a hard money right now, there's a lot of money out in the market. So there's a lot of people that are willing to lend you money as long as you provide them the details with how they're gonna get their money back and they're gonna be making money in the process because of interest. So if you truly believe in yourself and you have no money and you're watching this, that's how you do it. You just do the same process I did in step one, but now you have money by borrowing other people's money. The last one, and then we're done. Thank you guys so much for paying attention. The last one is, if you have money but not a whole lot saved up, and you don't wanna do hard money lending because you don't feel like you need to, like you're doing good, you got a six figure income job and you've got some savings, you got some blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, is that you just happen to stumble upon Twitter. You, right before Elon bought it, you just happen to buy Twitter and then you put 20, 50, 60 thousand dollars into it. And then boom, you just made a spike of 30, 40 percent or whatever it happens to be. And whoa, now I just am sitting with so much money and I don't want to keep it in that stock. I need to take it out and put it somewhere more safe. Whatever happens to be, whatever you spiked your money over the last six months to a year, and you're looking at your, your stock profile like, I've never had that much money and it still doesn't feel real. Like it feels like a video game, like high score, and I don't think it's actual cash. Take that money out, put it into something more safe, like real estate. If you want, you can keep on playing with the stock market, potentially lose it, it's your call, but you can keep it in there. Ooh, how about that? Take the money that you have, instead of pulling it out and putting it in real estate, which you could do, you can actually find someone, like a buddy of mine, part of our team that we're building for this, is that he can actually give you a loan based on 75% of your stock amount, and so say for, or your, uh, your stock profile. And so if you have $500,000 in there, and then he can give you up to 75% of that $500,000 that you now can go play with however you want. Now obviously you have to pay it back, but you still keep your money in the stocks. So if they keep on going up and up and up, it's in the stock market. So you still have your money, you didn't sell it. But now you're taking that money as leverage to make money elsewhere. Oh, it's genius. And then from there, you can take that lump sum and do what the first scenario is. You can take all that cash and then buy the property. And then after six months, put the loan on it, and then now you just get paid off that first thing, and you keep doing that, and boom, 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 and now your cycle's ready. You buy one house at a time, two houses, three houses, and now you're building an empire of flipping so many homes at the same time. Now currently, the way that I'm doing it, and that's, that's it, that's the lesson. Congratulations, if you follow these steps I just said in this video, you will become rich. Um, now, rich to you is something different than to me. Rich to me is residual income creates happiness. If rich to you is being a mega, mega billionaire, you're probably not gonna become a billionaire doing this unless you just get insane with it. But if you want residual income to create a way for you to not have to work for the rest of your life, then this is a way for you to do it. If you're just now getting into the real estate game and you're specifically in Dallas and you wanna reach out to me like a lot of people do on this channel and they wanna just say, hey, I have some extra money, can I buy a real, uh, an Airbnb? Unfortunately, right now, not really. This is the way for you to do it. Unless you wanna invest in South Dallas, good luck. Unless you wanna invest in Fair Park, oh my God, you better be super lucky with your neighbors. See you guys, make sure to like and subscribe.